Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. <laughs> uh, we are here, we're here with another transfer video, and this time we're focusing on Manchester United. Um, we're here with Ross and Barry from Energized. Yeah. We're on podcast. Um, I'll let you plug it before we start the video. Yeah. So if you just want to say a little bit about what your podcast does yeah. and everything like that. Uh, I want to first of all thank you for inviting us down. Yeah. Uh, we're Energized Ross and Barry. We, we do a podcast. Uh, we mainly focus on rugby, MMA, and football, and uh, yeah, that's where we're. Off. Yeah, that's very, very. <laughs> Check us out on Instagram. That's where. That's where we're at. And on SoundCloud as well. Isn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. links in the bio and all that. Yeah, links, <laughs> links down below. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, we'll move on then, and we'll start with our chat on Manchester United, and we'll start with the two lads who've come in so far this summer. Uh, Victor Lindelof from Benfica and Romelu Lukaku from Everton. Yeah. Uh, from a fan's point of view, are you happy with the two signings so far? Do you want to go first? Um, I'm actually quite happy with Lukaku. I didn't think we were going to actually go for him. I thought he was like like nailed on for Chelsea. Yeah. And then uh, when you see that he was way in Miami with Pogba, I was sort of thinking, why would he be there with him? Like You wouldn't see Roy Keane and Gerrard have mojitos in, yeah. in, in Dubai. So... Uh, once I saw I don't think you'd catch Roy Keane in Dubai regardless. I know, yeah, but, yeah, but um, that's why you wouldn't see like two main players of two yeah. main clubs like actually hanging out. So uh, once I saw that and then I heard the link, it was done within a couple of days. So yeah. obviously we needed some big boots to fill uh, Ibrahimovic's place and uh, new number nine, yeah. He scored against City as well, so that's a good start. Yeah. Yeah, I almost like Willie Lukaku, I like the way it was business done in Bam, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. There wasn't like a big saga, and uh, yeah. I'm glad we don't have like the Ronaldo saga. This was like Mourinho went out and like quashed the rumors, like, he was, like look, that's mission impossible, we're not getting Ronaldo, and that's yeah. fine. Um, yeah, Lukaku, great striker, proven the Premier League, big, strong, like almost feels exactly in for Ibrahimovic, a bit more pace to him. Yeah, he beats defenders. Look, he's, he's a great player, and like when you have people like Henri. Mourinho, uh, Hazard singing those praises, like, you must be doing something right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, obviously, last season, a lot of time, even though Ibrahimovic, for me, is probably the best striker the last 15 years in football out of anyone, and yeah. there was criticism, you know, at last season at times that there wasn't enough kind of pace going in behind and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. and there wasn't <clears> enough. <throat> they weren't kind of challenging defensive lines yeah. enough. Lukaku's not and I think every, most people have seen the video now Lukaku's first touches when the ball comes mm. on my feet with his back to goal they, they don't look great um, but in terms of his kind of you know he can get in behind the fences and he's an absolute terror when he does because he's so strong and he's so quick is that more exactly what you guys need for next season because Ibrahimovic got you to win in the Europa League and he got you to finishing in the top six in the league but no I get, I get where you come from uh, it was more when, you know, it actually looked a lot better when Ibrahimovic was out of the team, as in football style-wise, like everything was yeah. more free-flowing, whereas any time Ibrahimovic got the body sort of like held it up a bit, yeah. and then people would be gone, and then all of a sudden the runs off, and then it was just too congested. But I mean, in the first season with his style, that's the first time you know I've ever had like a full forward to like control everything. Yeah. Um, I think Lukaku is definitely going to fit in a bit better, just based on he's like, he's more energetic. Uh, he's, what would you... We'd probably be just as strong, but he's more adapted to the league. He knows all like the whole season. He's been playing the Premier League for about five years now, at least. More familiar with maybe the central defenders and stuff like yeah, that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. him, which would have been. Cause yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, Mourinho also hinted that he might do two up top. He might uh, throw Rashford up top with him, yeah. and like yeah. that, that has like that's ultimate power and pace because Rashford's yeah. so fast and like. Rashford looks like physically, even over the last six months, he's really developed as well. Yeah, he looks like he's been hitting the gym since the season yeah. finished. Yeah. When, sure. he's 20, when he's 23, he's going to be like a different animal. He'll, yeah, probably, yeah. Be, he's, he'll probably end up being the same physique as uh, Cristiano. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, what, what, six three, six Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, he's, like, he's like a tall, big fella. And like, look, w when it comes down to it, it, Lukaku also has that relationship with Pogba. And it's, yeah. it's a real friendship relationship. Like, yeah. I mean, they're spending their time away together yeah. on holidays. Um, you know, you don't just do that with one of your teammates. No. Nah. So, w yeah. when you add that into it, there's going to be good team chemistry in there. He seems to have already, like, gelled in well with the teams. When he scores goals, like, everyone runs and jumps up on him. And, like, yeah. that's what you want to see. You want to see that team atmosphere. Uh, it seems there. Yeah. I know Zlatan probably had that as well, but, like, half the players are probably afraid of him anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he comes in with such an ego and yeah. such a kind of aura about yeah. him as a footballer. Mm -hmm. 
Lukaku, I'd say, for a lot of lads, he mm. doesn't come in with that, yeah, he's a goal scorer and yeah. everything like that, but he, he doesn't have... He's more humble, have... he's more quiet. Like, yeah, yeah, he, he said it with Pogba, Pogba's like the outgoing one, he's like, yeah. he's, the, he's the fire to his eyes, they yeah. said that. Yeah. Like, Ibrahimovic is also sort of like a Conor McGregor, like, he, like the way he's like that, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. He's also got a point to prove to Mourinho, like, he, 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 I think he really, for his entire career, like, Mourinho's been, like, the manager who's, like, sent him away twice, and now this is his chance to prove that he was Mourinho the striker that Mourinho always wanted. You yeah, know what he mean? spent yeah. all this yeah. money on him now, where it's kind of like, roles have reversed, where mm. Mourinho was sending him off and kind of wasn't interested in bringing him into the first team, and now Mourinho is splashing the cash to yeah. bring him in. But the thing is, mm. with Chelsea, Chelsea always need the... Like the problem solved straight away. The players come in and start straight away. Whereas Lukaku yeah. was still only what twenty one, twenty two, still a bit like. It's, you see, his feet are so big. Still. Yeah, his feet are so big. Like he has to like grow into them and get the torch yeah. and everything. Like he's, he's like his game is very, very good and uh, it's just like his finishing could improve. But like I mean, that'll come in time. Like you're yeah. twenty four. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the o- obvious other kind of question towards the striker thing and Lukaku coming in and mentioning Zlatan. He's still not got a club, and the rumours in the last kind of two or three weeks have started to heat up a little bit more that maybe there's a chance he comes back when he returns from his injury. Would you take him? Obviously, he's coming back on a free again, and yeah, yeah. he's going to be on big, big wages. No. Yeah, he's going to be on big wages yeah. again, but it'd only be for another season. Would you take him back? I, I think to maybe no play question, with Lukaku. I think there's no question that they're going to take him back. Whether they play up front as a duo, who knows? Like, there's yeah. going to be a lot of games come second half of the season. Like, I assume you know they're still going to be in the Champions League. Um, there's going to be the FA Cup. There's going to be Europa League, and Mourinho doesn't let any trophies go. Yeah. Um, also, Zlatan re-enrolled his kids in the Man United Academy, so like all things are pointing towards those two reunite, reuniting. So, and if someone gets injured as well, we only have yeah. really Martial, Rashford, and Lukaku. Lukaku. Yeah. And like Lukaku's never even played Champions League football as well. That's harsh on James Wilson, lads. He's still not. Yeah. <laughs> is, he not, is he not left now? <laughs> no, I think he's still there. Yeah. Yeah, he won't be there for much longer. Yeah. He's yeah. older than Rashford and hey, Martial. He, as well. he, yeah. I think he might he might be the same age as Romelu Lukaku. Yeah. I, yeah, I think he might be 23 or 24. Yeah. Although he still looks like he's about 18. Yeah. He's, he's still getting an idea going into nightclubs because yeah. people don't know who yeah. he is. People wouldn't I know who he was. I always thought Will Keane was better than Wilson. But yeah, then he got that serious injury. It's unbelievable yeah. how like your career can end it from one injury. Yeah, yeah. we we'll move on then to the other sign and uh, Victor Lindelof. Yeah. And I, know, I noticed we actually didn't. We actually yeah. didn't talk about <laughs> yeah. that. Ne- neither yeah. of you just kind of yeah. mentioned him. You just that, kind of went. The he's unproven and hasn't won anything. Same guy as Lukaku. Do you, do, you not, do you not see Ray Wilkins say that? No. Ray oh, Wilkins, yeah, 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 like, yeah. He, he's won nothing and he's done nothing and he'd already won two Portuguese leagues. Oh, like three leagues. Yeah, three, three leagues. leagues. Two, yeah. two cups, uh, the under 23 European Championships, and he was like, should have got Michael Keane, he's proven. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't play back another player for yeah. so much money, it's yeah. stupid money. Um, but obviously, he's going to come in, and <laughs> the most likely scenario is it's going to be when everyone's fit, him and Eric Bailly is a yeah. set of half partnership. Yeah. <clears throat> is that an improvement on pretty much anything you've had since Ferdinand Vidic left? I don't know, Rojo really like stood out to me last year and like he actually looked really good in the centre half and like he has that bit of dirtiness about yeah. him that yeah. I almost like. Yeah. Uh, you know they were too you know they were too like nice to see. Yeah, it's too timid. Yeah, and now yeah. ever since they stick Fellaini in there, people are they're more bullying teams now again. Because yeah. you know what you know they were actually people were actually going to Old Trafford and believing they could win, whereas yeah. you know it's like history was built on we're gonna beat you. Yeah. So now when you start adding in like Ibrahimovic with the elbows, uh with the elbows like Bailey yeah Bailey's yeah. an absolute physical Rome. specimen yeah. uh, the, oh, in my opinion he's the best centre half in the league obviously I'm going to be a bit biased but like he, he has all the attributes he wants to centre half and I think Lindelof can be like his yin to the yang in centre half he can he can actually for me kind of come in and mention Ferdinand and Vidic he can kind of mm-hmm. come in and Lindelof yeah. can kind of do that Ferdinand role yeah. Lindelof's yeah. a really good passer of the ball he's good with the ball at his feet Almost looks like he could play as a defensive midfielder. Yeah, he, used to, he actually did play yeah. there as well. Yeah. yeah so. The so. thing about him is, I actually haven't seen an awful lot of them, but I uh, like I lo- I always look at the, the Portuguese league and see yeah. what how teams are doing. And like I, I looked at Benfica conceded something like eighteen goals last yeah. year. So like clearly doing well. Like their whole defense has been pillaged. Like yeah, yeah like Semedo's gone, gone to Barcelona, Barcelona and, and Ederson's like gone to Lanzi, City. Yeah. So like and Nelson Semedo went to Valencia. Sorry, the other Semedo went to Valencia yeah. as well, the central defender. So it, it's kind of yeah, their, Grima- their defense has been pillaged. And, like and Grima- pillaged for a reason. And and Grimaldo, the left back, is being linked with returning to Barcelona. So. Yeah. yeah, like their 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 whole defense wasn't ball because they were crap. So yeah. uh, like obviously Lindelof, yeah, he must be a bit of a leader as well. Yeah, um, well, we'll kind of move on to another point then about the players who kind of are possible transfers coming in. Right. Um, and we'll start with the one who's been floating around all summer since the start of May, and that being Ivan. <laughs> 
he's a twenty. He's a twenty-eight-year-old winger. Yeah. Um. Who has never really cut it at the very, very top level. Obviously, he's been really good at international level for Croatia. Yeah, yeah. For years, but yeah. he seems to live off playing for Croatia. It seems to be a big passion for him to put on that shirt. Um, at club level, he's kind of inconsistent. He had a, he's had a good couple of seasons at Inter, but it's the first time really in his career where he's been looking like a top-level player at his club. True, yeah. Does he justify, first of all, the price tag? And secondly, is he a player you even need with the amount of lads you have in those positions? Uh-uh. If, like, if we actually sign him... And put him in the right position down the left wing. He he can knock balls by anyone, yeah. and he cross the ball in like to, to anyone. And if we have Lukaku in there, like on the penalty spot, he's going to bury stuff. So I'd actually, if like I actually don't bet on anything, but like if you're actually going to put money on United you know, winning the league next year, wait until Paris is signed, and then uh, there's going to be like chaos going down that wing. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I actually thought you were being a bit harsh here because I thought he was quite decent at Dortmund as well. I think he's not been bad. Yeah, you know I'm, what? I, I think am he's probably been, being harsh about him at Dortmund. He was very good that last season. He was. I think Dortmund I think especially. he's sort of been like a sort of seven out of ten player and like has the potential to be an eight and a half, nine out of ten player on his yeah. good day. Um, look, you, I think he did twice many crosses the whole Man United team last year. Yeah. Uh, the fellow whips the ball into the box like there's no tomorrow. And like Barry said, with Lukaku, what are you all six foot three of them and like he's about. 17 stone would say Lukaku he's an yeah. absolute monster up top yeah. you know what I mean he's got to bully defenders and you have a fella to uh, swing the ball in I, I just think if you bring him into the side it does change the way we entirely play because yeah. yeah. last year all our wide players want to get inside and have a shot as opposed to he'll actually knock the ball on the outside defender yeah. and whip it in yeah. Yeah. Sure, he basically put Spain out of the Euros there yeah, yeah. he did yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's, 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 he's forged an international career by for Mario Mandzukic yeah. entirely by himself. Yeah. Well, like so. in fairness, yeah, the price is a lot, but I mean, like yeah, but it's sort of going right. Like yeah, but if you want if you want to win the league, I think it's a, a better investment than what we have because like Lingard, like just, he's not good enough. Like he like. He's, he's, really, he's a squad player and he's happy yeah. to be there doing a few dabs like and stuff. Yeah. I mean, bar that, bar that, he doesn't really score goals unless it's in a, like. A, a put, put, put it this way: if Lingard wasn't like. Paul Pog was the best mate. Like I'd struggle to see him yeah, there. Yeah, if he didn't live with Rashford and he wasn't a yeah. really good mate with Pog, but he'd be at West Brom. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, he's, he's an England international as well. You know, and he's yeah. always he's never yeah, injured. So yeah, but it, yeah, but England hand out like. Oh, no, I, like I, I, agree, yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, but uh, like you have to have like the sort of bad players have the good players as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um. Well, obviously you're happy enough with the possibility of Paris. Yeah. Um. Fabinho from Monaco, obviously had a phenomenal season for them last season especially in the Champions League yeah yeah, um, great, yeah. You, you kind of you mentioned Fellaini earlier and his nastiness with his elbows and stuff yeah. like that yeah. but if United are realistically going to win a league do you need to replace Maron Fellaini and Michael Carrick with a guy like Fabinho or the next guy, next one we're going to talk about in Matic the type of player that like, I definitely want is a Matic because yeah. if he's he'll sit then Herrera will chase everything down and then they'll let Pope sort of like he sort of like prances around the place, like with yeah. those big long legs, like a yeah. horse. So, yeah. like, someone has to be happy to sit there and cover the defense. And Maddich seems to want, like, he seems to be happy to do that. He wants to go to United. Uh, he's won what two, if not three, leagues with Chelsea. Yeah. So he's a proven r- winner as well. Because uh, if we sort of get, like, if we get uh, Fabinho, like, he hasn't played in the Premier League yet. Also, take away all the experience. He looks to be on the ball as well a lot. Well, like, you know what, to be honest, I haven't, like, last season I just solely focused on United you know, and how we can improve. I didn't, like, really, it didn't bother me what everyone else did. Obviously, yeah. I wanted to make Champions League. Fortunately, we got it in the, after the Europa League final. But, uh, like, we need a proper experience in there because we're losing Zlatan. And, like, Lukaku's not experienced. And, like, Matic should be the best person possible to get. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Barcelona someone that we can't get, like Tony Cruz. Yeah, well, in fairness, in my opinion, Tony Cruz is probably the best centre midfielder in the world. Yeah. Absolute laser beam football. Yeah, no, I think Manish would be a far superior signing than Fabinho. Like, Premier League proven means an awful lot, especially these days. Especially yeah. considering, like, you spend so much money on players and they flop. Um, yeah, that's why we got Lukaku over Morata. I yeah. said the Morata deal was nearly done, but, like, when Lukaku yeah. was available, it was just, like, it was a no-brainer, really. Well, for, yeah. me, for me, I'm on the flip side of it, where I think Morata, for twice the money of Lukaku, would have been a better signing, because I think Morata's actually the best Number no, nine. I, no, I agree. Number nine in the good. world, but that was just more of a gamble. Yeah, and then like you're getting proven quality. Bold. You're getting proven quality over like a possibility. 
Yeah. I think I think that's a very bold statement saying Morado's like the best number nine in the world. For me, he is the best yeah, number nine. Yeah, but like, what, well, coming off the bench, like, with, yeah, with a warm arse, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, number nine in the world that doesn't start. Yeah. Still, but still the second top goal scorer at the team who won the Champions League in La Liga last year. Yeah, but like, second by what? Like, a third of the amount of goals Ronaldo had. Well, he's only about eight or nine behind them. Yeah, but like, he, he think, in half the minute. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't like played a full season. Yeah. Like, yeah, since yeah. since that Juventus season, he's like almost unproven. League, he's almost unproven that, that like he yeah. actually hasn't played a full season. And like, say he's like the best number one in the world. Like that, like is almost harsh on like Higuain or like even Lacazette, who Arsenal got. Like in fairness, he was scoring goals for Lyon for the last yeah, three yeah. seasons consistently. Well, to me, it's either, and or, or Obama Yang even he was absolutely like nailing the goals. It to me, it's, if, if, to if me, Mar- it's Suarez, Lewandowski, and Morata. Well, if Morata had came to our, it came to United, we'd be singing his praises. Yeah, and like obviously, well, I'm not even knocking him. I'm just, I'm just more so like. You can't say he's the best number nine in the world when he sits on the bench half the time. He can't even start ahead of Benzema. He doesn't score 20 goals a season. Yeah, yeah that's because Zidane rotates. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just gives the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm the best goalkeeper in the world when I'm playing FIFA on the couch, but, like, sure enough. Um, so you'd be happier then with Matic over Fabinho, even though, yeah. obviously, Matic is, what, six years older than Fabinho as well. He's kind of more of a... Or <coughs> Carrick's six years older than him, like. Yeah, yeah, but why, yeah. But there's a reason you're trying to sign Matic, and that's because Carrick's dead. Like, well, they gave him. He's, 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 yeah. he's the captain, but yeah. Like, yeah, I know he's the captain, but he's the club captain. <laughs> Only in spirit. He's, 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 I, love like, way, I love that you just won't, like, won't let us have this, this moment. Like, yeah, yeah. We should be interviewing you. Like. <laughs> um, Next week, the ports with video. <laughs> yeah, okay, go for it. Um, yeah, but I think I think Carrick's more the club captain at United to deal with. Yeah, yeah, but they need that, yeah. To kind of do all the this charity league, right? stuff and everything like that, yeah. play a few League Cup games, couple of league games, and then Herrera is actually the team captain when it comes yeah, down. Yeah. Which is a great choice, in my opinion. Yeah. Nice yeah. captain, yeah. Do you think then that Herrera being essentially kind of the team captain this year because he'll play the vast majority of the games, and yeah. when you're picking United starting eleven, Carrick probably won't. Um, do you think that Herrera is kind of? More that captain in a you know a Vidic and yeah, he's like lead Keane, by example a Vidic yeah. and Keane role where he's kind of he's that leader on the pitch more yeah. so than for me I didn't even with England ever see Wayne Rooney as a real kind of captain I thought the captaincy was actually a burden on him with both United and England that he was a cracking player but if you took it away from him, took that responsibility away from him, just let him play football. He'd be a better player without having to do all the leadership stuff as well. Yeah, but once when Rooney got the captaincy, it was just different, like persona. And then, like if they took it away, it would have been blown up the way the English press are. Yeah. But like going back to Herrera, like Herrera does lead by example. He gets yeah. stuck in all the time, man. Like he's always getting stuck in, and he's very good at the ball. Yeah, and he's really reliable as well. Yeah. You're always getting minimum eight out of ten out of him every single yeah. game. He gives the absolute socks. And you know what? I think this is actually going to make him improve as a player given the captaincy. I think yeah. he will thrive on the leadership yeah. role. And there's not really anyone else there who was like putting their hand up for it either. No. Yeah. Um, and then you start really being obviously there's been some links and you mentioned it before with Lavin Kurzawa from PSG. But for me, left back seems to be now in the team after the couple of signings. Maybe apart from another centre midfielder, left back screams to me as the biggest kind of position and need for United. And you don't really seem to be have any interest in kind of addressing that issue this see oh, oh, I'm actually convinced that Luke Shaw is going to fill in at left back this year and he's going to play a lot I feel like he's going to do the summer tour on Mourinho he's going to be fit and he's going to have, Mourinho's going to be in his ear because I think Mourinho wouldn't give out as much as he has about Luke Shaw if he didn't see the potential in him yeah. otherwise he would just discard him yeah. so I think he has, sees a lot of potential in Luke Shaw Luke Shaw's got all the tributes or he, maybe he's a bit heavy at times, uh, but I think he's got all the talent to do it. So maybe Mourinho's sitting there quite smugly thinking Luke Shaw's got this nailed down. Um, yeah. We're going to see how he goes. Yeah, and they might not, and if it's not worked out, they might pick someone up in January. I don't yeah. see them signing a left back this summer. Yeah, yeah. sure. They have Bailey, uh, sorry, uh, Daley Blaine, second choice, and then third yeah. choice, Ashley Young, who isn't yeah. bad for third choice. And he's just happy to get on the pitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he will literally play anywhere. Yeah. If he's on another one, then we have four. He'll play anywhere. And if you ask him to play for United, it's under 23 in the check and, tra- check and trade trophy. He'd yeah. create like a yeah. World Cup. That's what you want in your players yeah. as well. Like, you don't want these. Like, yeah, but well, Mourinho loves those one or two players. Like, he hates those all play anywhere, but he loves having one or two. He's just happy out. And he's like, right, grab. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you need him. The John O'Shea is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, then the biggest outgoing that you have had this summer, apart from probably Zlatan, is Sam Johnson. Yeah, Sam Johnson going on his eighth, <laughs> his eighth, his eighth loan spell to the championship. Um, 
He's not bad actually, but like yeah. when you have yeah. the best goalkeeper in the world and the best and backup goalkeeper yeah, in the world yeah. backing yeah. him up. Yeah. yeah. Romero's on a new deal this 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 year as well. I'm not surprised, man. If actually we'll sidetrack to that then, obviously the the hair rumors oh, he's not going. Don't desist and he's not gonna go this summer. I think we all no. know that, but maybe next summer the Broken fax machine's been long gone and yeah. that fax machine that they never re- repaired it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just never it's not gonna be fixed until the hair retires. Yeah. Um, and then the day after they're just gonna blast. No, no there's too much potential for United going forward for like him start leaving. Yeah. Like yeah. they're they're spending the money, they're getting the right players in. Back in Champions uh, League, they're back in Champions League. There's just there's no reason for them to leave Real Madrid, who are more potentially going to be on the decline than United are on the incline. Yeah. Because like in fairness, well, I know everyone says like it's, it's some year it's eventually going to be Ronaldo's last year, yeah. and uh, it might not be till twenty sixty two. Yeah, and but, he's actually a cyborg. But yeah, like, yeah. yeah. In some year it's going to be his last year, and like when Ronaldo goes. Real Madrid are going to be a few steps behind Barcelona, I think. Yeah, they, well, I think that's getting sidetracked to that extent. Oh no, I don't get that extent. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I think uh, I think what I'm more saying is that like, I think the Hayes is more upside at you know at the moment. Yeah, and yeah. Mata and Herrera are there as well. Yeah. so yeah. he's like best mate to them as well. Back to Wayne Rooney there and away from Sam Johnson. <laughs> um, who we all listen we all we all know who the biggest transfer out you know it was this summer and that was Sam Johnson on his yeah. loan move with Aston Villa but this lad Wayne Ro- <laughs> this lad Wayne Rooney left he loads of potential once upon a time but yeah, kind yeah. of just flattered to the sea for the most of it yeah. a bit like a bit like a kind of graying James Wilson really is all he was uh, <laughs> yeah I found the Rooney transfer weird well not weird it looked it made perfect sense when him back to Everton I actually think he'll do quite well Everton he'll probably rejuvenate his career because he's only 31 after all so he probably has another 3 or 4 years at the top um, but the weird thing was I thought he was sort of part of and then like, he started saying like weird stuff but like I wore my Everton pajamas every night, which is like definitely a lie. I don't, I don't believe like Wayne Rooney, like as a little child, like got into his pajamas. I'm sure he slept in boxers like most lads. Um, you know, <laughs> like, you know, so he's a grown man. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, even the way, even the way he had his kids, made sure that they're born in Liverpool. Yeah, as well, like yeah. Yeah, he was never like his heart was never really at United. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. In fairness, as much as he loved Manchester United football club, like Liverpool was always home. Yeah. Um, look, he he was an absolute club hero. He, he did score so many important goals, so many great goals. Um, I almost think he tarnished his reputation by almost staying there the last two or three years. But it's hard to think at 29, he played 13, like almost full seasons at the top top yeah. level. And uh, like his last two, if not even three years, were sort of. He was sure. almost become a bit part player and he was coming on and he wasn't making impacts in the games. Yeah. And he was like a struggle. He almost stayed to score that 250 goal. And like I think Mourinho was like, finally. Thought you were thought it was gonna be next year when you scored that. Yeah, he sort of lost the bite as well. Yeah, that like passion. I think it was all used up by the time he was like twenty seven, maybe. Yeah. Do you think um the biggest issue with Rooney was in those last couple of years that he never seemed really kind happy of happy with the hair transplant? Yeah, well that <laughs> that to begin with because that's it's gone to, it's gone to shit now. Yeah. It, it looks yeah. bad now. I'm not one. He looks to like, talk. He looks so I'm not one to talk, but. He looks so much older, man. Yeah, he looks like he's in his late thirties now. Yeah. Um, but, but he's so overused. As yeah, well, but he, like, was, well. he was just captain of Man United and captain of England for so long. I think the yeah. burden was just on his shoulders over and over and over again, and like he couldn't cope with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think that that the biggest problem for him was that he was in his mind he was still a world class striker and he was still a world class number nine and wanted to play up front because he had spent some of his time earlier in his career accommodating Ronaldo and Tevez and stuff like that and kind of playing out wide or playing deeper or whatever that. Maybe if he had have thought, okay, maybe I move into being a more natural number ten or even a number, you know, even a number six or a number five in the midfield, like kind of playing that deeper role where he had a good passing range, he had a good head on him, and he could tackle and everything like that. That maybe moving into central midfield would have furthered his career. You know, it had he done it younger than he actually tried to. You know, the things he was never like actually that skillful on the ball. Like he was never like. That like he was more like a, he was more aggressive when he out barge and or knock a boy. Yeah, he, he was sort of pace. He wasn't going to do a rainbow flick yeah, over yeah. your head. Whereas like. whereas like in the centre mids these days, like people have to be so skilled. And, yeah, yeah but it was almost the brain as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, his feet weren't as quick as his brain, even though like he wasn't actually that, that clever. But like yeah. f- for football, he was like so smart. Uh, I'm sure he'd be a good manager, but like. Well, as in like ta- like although a Wayne Rooney team talk people. would be something to. I know, yeah, but yeah, I know, but like, <laughs> yeah, but like don't you know, some certain people have like 
like out with three things they'd probably be very good at two things but not have a main component so therefore they can never be successful yeah. like Tony Adams for instance like I mean like Arsenal legend won numerous things like encouraged loads of people to even probably even start playing football but like he he's obviously missed like he got Granada there relegated like you know I mean he just can't but do anything like right. he is they nearly yeah. got a Portman side that won the FA Cup the year before relegated as well he's a fucking shit manager yeah, like, <laughs> yeah well like <laughs> I thought, uh, like Rooney's given us all to the game and he's made loads of people like love the sport I think he was actually in his prime almost if you look back at his career for United when he was actually at the Euros and broke his foot uh, like that was his big like coming out party to the whole entire football yeah. universe and that was robbed in him and then the, that was all when Ronaldo did the, did the wink and all this shit as well wasn't it yeah, yeah. The, the other thing with that is that we're in this like absolute God area of football with Ronaldo and Messi, and then like everyone else, like the world class, the world world class now means a different thing with yeah. those two in it. And like, if you, if those two didn't exist, like Rooney would be thought of so much higher. Yeah, like but because he so played like, so with Ronaldo as and like they sort of grew up at the same age and they were like going up and up and up. And Ronaldo's like all the way, like he's like looking at Mount Everest on top of Mount Everest, yeah. and like Rooney's an ant down there. Rooney's there at the top of Bray Head. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's not the same. So yeah. he was he was always going to have that comparison, and then like he just never kicked on to like the world class level. And he never brought England to like even I don't, I don't think he, did they ever even reach a semi final? Did they? No. no, no. So like he, I don't think England have reached a semi final since the ninety. No, you're on ninety six. Yeah, but the last they've time never they they've never really put it. They never even picked the right players. Yeah. It's all just down to like. You had to pick certain people, or else you're gonna get dropped. Remember, it was Sven Goran Eriksson was saying that like he brought Rooney was it to the World Cup, yeah, 2002. Yeah, yeah. and he was saying that like he had to bring Wayne Rooney, or else Actually, he would have been shot. Like 2006, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Was that? Was that? He didn't go in out two. Out two was um, Korea, Japan. Korea, Japan. Yeah, that was well, the, 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 the that was the Beckham World Sven. Cup. With Sven, the one with Sven, anyway, he was like, I have to bring him, or else it's just over. Yeah. And I'll then, say, I'll say, six, and he brought Theo Walker yeah. as well, and I'll say. Yeah, but look, I, I think when it comes down to it, Wayne, Wayne Rooney's Man United career, yeah, it was quite successful, but it's going to remember that he like stayed around too long yeah. and that he, he he's made fans be less appreciative, I think, basically. Yeah, yeah sure, he'll, but he'll, he'll definitely end up with like, a statue outside the stadium, I think. Like. I don't even know if he will. He's the all-time top goal scorer, so I would... Whether it's outside, it's too many statues. Like he, whether he, it's he might outside, get else. Yeah, but top whether, it's, it. whether it's outside Old Trafford, whether it's outside Carrington, or whether it's even outside Wembley with England, um, I think he's yeah. gonna he's yeah. gonna get one because yeah, he all gets one at Wembley. He's gonna have yeah. to get one at Old Trafford. He's the all time top goal scorer for the biggest club in England and the English national team. That's why I think people forget with him is. Yeah, he's thirty one and he's kinda of looks burnt out now, but what a career. Joe, Joe what a do. career that man Joe had. They can rub they wrote the Ronaldo statue at that uh, Portuguese airport and yeah. they put that on Old Trafford and just make it because it looks a bit like yeah. Just, yeah. just, kind of, <laughs> just cut a bit good. of the hair off. Yeah, like, yeah, just, put, put some hair in it. Yeah. Just do a bit of a chisel and it'd be grand. Look exactly like Rooney. Um, uh, he's a legend. Yeah, in fairness, yeah. it's a great team to go to Everton, and I'm looking forward to actually watch him play at Everton as well because I think he'll go back and he'll do well. And that's a boy hope club, and that's who yeah. he loves to play for. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see him. He's done well in pre season. So. No, his passion was unrivaled. Mm. Well, like yeah. he did play with Keno, so I mean, like, yeah. I'm sure he learned a bit. But uh, yeah. like when he when he scored and when he like it, did, it didn't feel like he was really into it for the last few years. Yeah. And also, you know, like it was just. Uh, I think you know, I, but I think you can see it. You can see just... it on the pitch. Like yeah, you know I mean? yeah, but he even said himself that like the. The standards of the United dropped yeah. after yeah. Ferguson left. Yeah, I was about to say, like, more so than even Rooney yeah. himself. I think when Ferdinand left, when Vidic left, when Giggs left, when Scolds left, all of those kind of players, yeah. I think a little bit of United and what the culture yeah, of that Doyle football with... club was for so long left with that. And Wayne Rooney was kind of the only one left at yeah. that point. Yeah. And I think it was very hard for him to maybe adapt to what Moyes was trying to do and yeah. what Van Hal was trying to do when he was so ingrained in Fergie's mentality and Fergie's way of doing yeah, things yeah. at United. Yeah. Sure, he was in, meant to leave before, before Moyes came in, but yeah, Moyes was yeah. like, here, look, just stay and we give you 300 grand a week. Yeah. It's like, okay. He's also a very rich man now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll move on finally on United to the main event and an absolute club legend who's on his <laughs> way who's on his way out and it's it's shockingly sad, but Adnan Yanazai has joined uh, Real Sociedad. Say it ain't so. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I remember when Adnan Yanazai 
Uh, it was like he's born. He's, he actually has the same birthday as Cristiano Ronaldo, and uh, they were like, "Look at him. He's only a frail little fella." When Ronaldo got here. He's only a frail little fella, and then PSG were dr- going to buy him for yeah. fifty million. And I was like, "Don't tell him, lads. Yeah, no, Don't tell him." He's actually so slow now. Yeah. Well. Imagine you had to take fifty million for him back then, and he was now oh. playing for Nice or something. In fairness, like when that. he first arrived, he had such good ability to beat someone, and then like he had that left foot, yeah, and he never, scored like, so many good goals, but. He just never developed. Like, Remember all the countries wanted to yeah. play for him as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. all the countries were arguing. England, Belgium, Albania, yeah. Kosovo. Kosovo. Yeah. My God, he should have picked Serious Kosovo exactly. in retrospect. Like. But like, <laughs> uh, you know what? He should have been in the gym, obviously eating the weights because that's all you need to do at that yeah. stage. You need to just put on a bit of size. He was too fl- flimsy. I remember there was a... Uh, he went over in the corner flag Should and everyone was getting kicking him and then Fellaini came in and like started knocking people out of the way it, yeah. he, he was like it was like having your <laughs> little having brother playing <laughs> playing on, on what's called on the road and your little brother six and like someone puts him back and like, tackle on him so you have to go like, over and protect him it's like everyone their 16s team you know being one lad short and your 13 year old brother yeah. is, he's decent to football like yeah. and it's like right it was, just throw him on the left wing or whatever it's funny how some people contrive that and other people can't like look at Rashford the way he's taken his career and Yanisoy would sort of be like the same as in like they're just sort of thrown in yeah. Yanisoy ended up getting number 11 and then like where is he now and then you look at like Rashford like probably England, one of England's best strikers yeah absolutely well we'll wrap up that discussion there and we'll uh, give you a quick I wish there were more bigger transfers that would have been like yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe we'll have to get you in later on in the summer when you yeah. you know yeah. sign Cristiano Ronaldo we'll stick, we'll stick on like all smoke and mirrors jerseys <laughs> I must say our own transfers <laughs> um, we'll let you plug quickly just uh, the podcast and stuff like that and let people know just again uh, where to find out what it's about and why they should listen to us yeah. we are Energised Ross and Barry we have a uh, sports and lifestyle podcast so we talk a bit, bit about ourselves then we talk about mainly football rugby MMA um, check us out on Instagram Energised underscore or and B and the links in the bio for the podcast. Um, Facebook, Energizer Ross and Barry. Yeah. We'll obviously yeah. shout this out off our yeah. pages yeah. as well. Okay, so check all them links out below. Make sure to go and listen to the podcast and like the Instagram page and everything like that. We'll be back again soon. Make sure to like, share and subscribe for us as well. Uh, we've been Irish Football Fan TV. They've been Energizer Ross and Barry. Yeah. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah.